so I'm Rosie. Um, I have three boys. Um, I have one that's 20, one that's 16, and one that is 13. Mm. Um, so I started this business. Um, basically, it was just like a God thing, like the the door just kind of opened up or whatever. So um, I used to run a mechanic shop, and so I went from that to like a boutique. Mm. <laughs> so it was like a really like huge change for me or whatever. Um, but that's that's really it. Like I, I can kind of get more into it. Um, yeah, so you, have more you questions. ran or you operated, owned a mechanic shop? I didn't own it. I just um, ran it for a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got two businesses, and so he just needed someone in there that could like, keep it going because he couldn't be there. Um, so, yeah, so I ran it, did all the – I worked out in the shop some if I had to, mm-hmm. ordered all the parts, did all the estimates, did all the payroll. So it was a huge transition. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think the biggest lesson or – what did you learn from running the mechanic shop that has helped you now? With um, well, I mean, I've ran other things other than that, but I think with the mechanic shop, because you're dealing with more public people and, like, money and just um, – I think it just helped me, like, um, learn how to just manage things a little bit better mm-hmm. and understand, like, how business works – um, as far as like trying to keep it open, um, how to draw in customers, um, how to manage the financial part of it, you know, things I've not ever had to do before. So um, obviously when you're doing that for someone else's and that's their money, <laughs> you know, you're going to learn and you're going to do the best that you can. So I think that kind of helped me whenever I started into the brick and mortar, like I, could, I understood it just a little bit better and just like the hardship of it too because it's not easy it's it's pretty hard it's it has its rough moments so okay well tell us what everything rose is and kind of how you <coughs> the value that you provide to your customers so everything rose is a boutique um but i had i wanted to venture out and do something different um pottsville is small but it is growing and so i wanted to bring just something different and unique um to that community so I decided, well, hey, I'm just going to start adding a little bit of everything in there. So I thought, you know, I could do vendors, people who have things and that they enjoy to do, um, more like hobbies, you know, because everyone has a job. So I thought, you know, if I could help them get their stuff out, um, get their names out there, get them known, um, that would be great too. You know, that's helping them also. Um, and then it also just brings a little bit more to Pottsville. You know, there's not anything there like that. You know, I'm pretty much the only thing there mm-hmm. um, as far as that goes. Um, and so basically, so we have just, I mean, everyone is, it's it's from the community. I do have a couple people in there who, one's from um, New Mexico, one's from Illinois that reached out to me. Um, and so I brought in their products as well. So I think that's pretty neat to have, you know, people from different states that found me because I'm such a small. <laughs> How did they find you? Um, I think they just found me through, well, one of them knew me, um, but she had moved and then she had seen that I had opened up a business and stuff. So she had reached out to me. The other one, I think she just come across my page, like going, mm-hmm. like scrolling through. And so we just got to talking and um, actually we talk quite often now. And so I was like, hey, you know, I was like, I would love to carry your stuff if you, you know, if you're willing to ship it or whatever. And so that's what she's been doing. So I think it's pretty neat Mm -hmm. just to have, you know, other people that's not from here also in there. I think it makes it a little bit different. Um, um, On top of that, I do like a ministry. So um, I have like a ladies night. So we do like Bible studies. Um, And then I'm fixing to start a teen night. So it'll be teen girls, 13 to 19. um, And we'll set that up a little bit different um, for them. But um, it's just something just to bring people in. I feel like God opened that door for me for a reason. And so um, obviously I want to be obedient and do that. Um, So I've had good success just with that. You know, people just coming in. Um, I have, when you first walk in, like there's a table, there's a Bible there, and it has like a jar for prayer requests and stuff like that. And they can just drop it in there, keep it private. No one else sees it but me. Um, And so I think building those relationships with those people is what has also helped it grow just a little bit. And it's just different. Like you don't really see that a lot, I don't think, around here, you know. Um, And if you do, I'd I've not, you know, I don't know about it. Um, 
But I just feel like people just sometimes, especially for women, um, I do have a lot of men that come in there, and that's fine. Um, I'm going to try to start a men's line, like a small men's line, um, because, like I said, I would like to bring a little bit to a little of everything for everybody um, in there. Um, but I just feel like women just struggle. Uh, teen girls just struggle. Life's just hard. Um, I think a lot of times they're just hard on themselves as far as, like, how they look um, what people think about them, you know, we just live in an ugly world. And so in my shop, as you walk through, you'll see um, on every wall, um, every room, there's scriptures posted all over the place. Mm. Um, in the bathrooms, on the mirrors, I have like, you are beautiful. So like when they walk in there, you know, that's what they're going to see the first thing. Um, so it's kind of just to give them confidence, um, mm. to build them up and also just know, hey, yeah, you can come in here and shop, but you can also come in here and just talk and or if you just need someone to pray with you, or if you just need to cry, or if you just need to laugh, you know, I think sometimes mm. women just need that, you know. And so God just kinda drew me in that direction. So that's been just a huge that's like my main goal, honestly, is, you know, just be able to reach out to people, but to build a a personal relationship also. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So you're in, how many people live in Pottsville? Only a few thousand. Oh, right? Lord. Yeah, there's not very many. I'm actually from Dover. So I live north of Dover. So, I mean, I'm like in a community that I didn't even grow up in. You know, I've grew up in Dover. And so God just kind of took me out, out in that direction. So um, I think that's also a pretty neat thing, too, just to be, you know, in a community that I didn't grow up in. But yeah, there's not very many. It's not very big. Do you, what, how many vendors do you have in your store? I have about 40 in there right now. Okay. Um, so I have a quite a bit in there. We just expanded. I just expanded it in January. So we opened up a whole nother suite. And so we expanded into that suite. And so I have about 40 in there. And um, and it's still growing. So I'm still making room. It's getting tight in there. But I'm making room for others. I have a couple more that's going to come in and mm -hmm. things like that. So I try to, if they want to come in, I do my best to make the room for it <laughs> yeah i'm curious like what are the the biggest challenges of running a business like this where you're providing um, a platform for other vendors so it, it is challenging number one um i feel like for any mom and pop business as what i call it um i don't i feel like uh people may not really understand um the hardship and the challenges of trying to keep that open for the you know for for yourself and for other people so I think my challenge is you know you're in a you're in a small community um we're kind of in we're not off the road or anything so we're kind of middle of nowhere so that kind of makes it a little challenging for us as well um just trying to keep the foot traffic and the flow um, and people knowing, hey, I'm here, we exist, you know, that that has been a challenge for us as well. Um, but I will say over the year it has grown a lot. Um, I'm very active on, like, social media and Facebook and things like that um, to try to help that and stuff. And, um, and it does. It helps a lot. So what's, what's been the most effective part of, like, Mark? How do you – what's been the best marketing tool you've used? Um, I feel like – Honestly, lives. I feel like if I go live on Facebook mm. um, and just kind of talk to people just like I'm talking to you and then kind of show the store, talk about other vendors and things, I think that that helps a lot because people get to kind of get to know you on a personal basis if they don't come into the store, you know, mm. because they get to see you, they get to hear your talk, they get to see your emotions, and I think that's important, you know, for people to. Yeah. So I think that's probably the most effective part. For me, is just being live on Facebook. When when did you start doing those? So I've done them all the time. So I'm always on there, and I've just tried to do different things. Um, it's just crazy because I'm on there constantly. Like it's very active. My Facebook page is very active, but I have people that live like right down the road, and they'll come in and be like, "Oh my gosh, how long have you been here?" And I'm like, "Oh, two years." They're like, two years." <laughs> so. I feel like the challenge there, too, is there's been so many different businesses over there, and they've not stayed, and so I think people just forget, mm. you know, hey, there's people over there, you know, because there's other businesses over there as well besides me, mm. and so I just try to, you know, do my best to kind of get it out there. Hey, there is people over here, you know, we want to be a part of, you know, the community, and we want people to come in and just see what we have and what we offer and get to know me and things like that, so... Wow, Facebook Live. So is that something you think most <laughs> business owners should be trying to think, they explore for their business? I think so. I think I think um, it might sound silly, but I feel like 
um, we can get on there and we can post all day long. Like I can post pictures and I can write things on there and stuff. And I think it's harder to really get to know someone and know where they, where they come from just by reading something or seeing something versus actually um, hearing them talk, seeing their face. You know, I think you really can know someone just by like this. Mm-hmm. And the same there, you know, I might not be in front of them, but they're seeing – you know, my expressions, they're hearing my tone and, mm-hmm. and things. So I think, I think it is a good idea to kind of get out there. And I'm not, I mean, I had to really step out of my comfort zone. I'm a very outgoing person. I'm a people person. Um, I'm not really shy, but I, I don't like to be put on the spot. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I've really had to, those have been some challenges. I've really had to just step out of my comfort zone and be like, you know what, I just got to do it, you know. So I think that if they can get past that, um, I think it would help a lot. Does I mean, what does a typical live look like? What do you talk about? Are you answering questions um, in the comments? Or? I just wing it. I'm just one of those. Wing. I don't have a plan. I just wing it. I just get up one day, and I'm like, you know what? We're going to go live. So I'll just go live, and I'll just get on there and just be like, hey, it's Rosie. You know, good morning. I hope everyone's having a great day. I just want to do a walkthrough, kind of show you some new things that's been brought in. So I'll just do like a quick walkthrough through all of the vendors mm-hmm. showing everything. Um, if I have something that's coming up, like an event or something, I'll talk about that. And sometimes I'll get on there and I'll just be like, Hey, I might share a scripture or just something that God's laid on my heart. Um, sometimes I get on there and I'll just be like, Hey, if you have any prayer requests, um, you can just shoot them in the comments or if you want to keep it private, you can just private message me just different things all the time. Um, so right now I have a, a small coffee bar. It's not anything special, but it's free, and I just take donations, so I've hooked up with the Pottsville School District, Mm -hmm. and so all those donations will go to the school, so it's just going to go towards the kids that need, like, you know, that are just less fortunate, that need things, and stuff like that, so um, I was able to work with the school district to do that, so that's one of my ministries that, you know, that I'll keep going throughout the whole year, you know, is just people can come in, get a coffee, if you want to donate, you can, if you don't, that's fine, too, you know, um, but that's, I just get on there and wing it. I don't ever know. Yeah. <laughs> My sister-in-law is always like, I can't, you know, I cannot do that. But I'm just one of those. It just comes to me. Once I get on there, it'll just, it yeah. just comes to me. So do you see that as like part of the value that you provide to your vendors? Like, Hey, I'm marketing your yes. marketing your place. And um, marketing for yes. Yes. Because like I said, they all have jobs, you know, they're not, they can't just be there and stuff. So I take the time to. I post their stuff. I take pictures daily. Um, I schedule posts to, for those things to go out. I do videos daily for them. Sometimes I go live and try to um, push some of their sales for them and take um, sales through the live and just pull stuff as it sells. Um, and that way it helps them to, you know, it helps them sell their things and kind of get their names out there. I try to introduce each vendor who they are and what they do and things like that. So, I think that's that's something that I offer that kind of helps them out. That's a little bit different. Yeah. Have you have you seen any of your vendors like they all you have forty? How do you find them? Do they, <laughs> do they find you? Um. So some of that's funny because the first year I started there, um, I had um someone was with me or whatever. So we just I kind of knew a few people. She kind of knew a few people or whatever. And um, well, when she left, um. It was already small, like the the shop was already small. We didn't have very many people in there. And so everyone, like a lot of people just kind of like pulled out or whatever. So I was like, oh gosh, I'm panicking, you know, because we were closed for um, Christmas break. And so I was opening in four days. So I'm like stressing out. And I was like, that's, I'm done. I'm just going to close shop. I can't, you know, it's just stressful or whatever. And so my brother's like, no, you're not, you know. So I just started praying about it. And I was like, you know what, God, just, you know, this is, I stepped out, you know, I leaped out in faith, quit a full-time job, you know. Um, so I'm just, you just bring them to me. Whoever needs to be in here, you just place them in here. Well, within, before the four days, I had 20 people come in before we opened in four days. And then by two weeks, I had like 40 people on just that side before I even expanded. No. So it was very tight over there. <laughs> so I was like, oh, my gosh, we're going to have to expand at some point, you know. So that's when um, it just kind of 
become available or whatever, and I was able to expand and kind of spread people yeah. out, and I can bring more people in there. But so are most people yeah. hearing heard about you? Those forty people was it mostly word of mouth? Or were you um, I think they just seen like because I was I, like I said I get on there and I post a lot, mm -hmm. and I do a lot of lives. So then like people would just start messaging me, hey, do you have this type of things in there? Hey, do you have this? And I'm like, no. And so I'd like you can come in and meet me, check it out, see what you think first, pray about it, whatever you gotta do. Um, so that's pretty much how it all started was just, you know, people would just start asking questions if they can come in. And so they pretty much found me. I, I tried not to to look for people um, just because I feel like um, the right ones, God will send the right ones that need to be in there, that he knows that needs to be in there. And so I have, I mean, all 40 of them are just great. Like, they're amazing. I mean, we all have a good relationship. I mean, we're all friends. Um, we hang out, so it's. I think it's just definitely a, a God thing for sure. Yeah. Do you think this community in general has a lot of entrepreneurs like this mm -hmm. that make – do most of them make their products? or? Have, yes. Yeah. So uh, obviously some of the, the boutiques do not, but like I have – everyone else that's in there makes their products. So there's like soaps, there's honeys, there's jams, there's hair products, um, there's – door signs there's um i have a girl who does plants i have a florist that just come in mm -hmm. so she does um flowers parties whatever real fake flowers um i have a merchandise room and it's just a little bit of everything in that room i have a um consignment room a small consignment room i started that i want to expand you know in there as well but yeah, the majority of them makes their own thing. So there's just, there's a lot in there. There's just, there's a little bit of everything in there. Uh, freshies, I can't, I mean, What's a freshie? I can't name them all. Uh, for your car, like a car okay. freshie. Mm -hmm. Wow, I, I didn't realize that there were that many people around here doing stuff like that. Yeah, it's, cra cool. it's crazy. So I actually just made a post, um, so I'm trying to do something more unique, like something I don't have in there. Like I said, I'm trying to bring in more of a men's line, men's accessories and stuff. So I have, um, I've made a post like, hey, you know, if you can like give me some ideas of something that you don't see very much of that you would like to have around here, you know. So that's something that people, I'm trying to get people to give me some feedback on because at the end of the day, you know, we're trying to, um, we want to pamper them and bring stuff in that they enjoy and, and would like to see. And so it helps me just getting their opinion. So I think that matters too. I think if people know that they matter and what they like matters and stuff like that, they're going to respect you and they're going to support you and stuff yeah. like that. So so what's the best seller that you've had? Um, I'm going to say um, the honey for sure. Um, the honey and the clothes. The clothes are huge sellers. The soaps. Um, and the freshies, those are like the things that people just, in the plants, boom, 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 boom. Now that I have the florist in there, um, that's been a hit too. I have people calling like, hey, you know, mm -hmm. can she do this? Can she do that? And stuff like that. So they all do good in there, you know, but those are probably my main, the main things that just tend to go really quick. Um, and the t-shirts, I have graphic tees and stuff in there, and those those tend to go pretty quick too, so... Wow. Have you tried running any sort of advertising before? So, no. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, I'm not going to lie. It's kind of scary because, you know, you're some of that stuff's expensive. And so you're just like, yeah. should I just do it myself or do I, you know, I'm one of those, like I, sometimes I overthink mm -hmm. things. My husband was just like, you have to spend money to make money. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, you know, but no, but that is something that I have been looking into is, is, um, doing something a little bit different as far as the advertising part. Can I share something with you? Yeah. And it, it, I want to show this to everyone listening too because it's something that we've recently started doing for you know, for our business, and it's been way more effective than other forms of advertising mm -hmm. we've done, which is Facebook ads. So this is different than boosting a post, specifically okay. not boosting a post. Facebook has a couple different ways you can build an ad with them. Okay. Have you ever boosted a post before? You ever see that yes. button that says boost yes. to reach more people? Yes. So that's kind of like the easy way. They make it really easy for them to get your money. Yes. And in some, I mean, what it does is, it, yeah, it boosts it. But we've started running this ad, and we've spent maybe, 
I mean, you can spend like a dollar a day, you know, that's mm-hmm. 30 bucks a month, you hey. know, and you can actually see results with it. So you just go into the Facebook ads manager for a- anyone listening and you just set up a simple ad. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. It can be a picture of your store. It can be several pictures of video. And then, uh, you know, you write a bit about your store. Just obviously tell people, hey, you know, this is a boutique in Pottsville. We have, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, of course, the thing that makes you unique. And then the goal of the campaign in Facebook, you just run to, for people to like your page. You don't try to get them to go to a website. You don't try to get them to watch a video. But if you run it for likes, your page will get more likes, which is cool, but that doesn't you know, mean much in right. terms of you know, making money. But it, it, it has worked for us, like just oh, the amount cool. of people uh, that are aware of what we do. And mm-hmm. it's been very, very cost effective. So, I mean, that's something you can do for 30 bucks a month. Maybe not, you know, yeah. if you don't even want to spend that, you want to try it for two weeks. Use twenty bucks for two weeks, and um, in, in this community, you know, the River Valley, Polk County, it's just so small. So you do a little bit of advertising, and then it works. But then they go to, you know, word of mouth is a big thing. Yes. So they'll go tell their people. Yes. And before you know it, I agree. A lot the word of mouth. Know yeah, about you. that's a good idea. I'll have to try that. Like I honestly, I didn't know there was a difference in the yeah um, ads in the Lucy. <laughs> I'm like really old fashioned, so I'm 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 learning along the way with all that stuff too. So absolutely, I mean I think that's hopefully most business owners you're always learning. Yes, like we we've you know we try things and then we fail, and then it's just important to be able to learn from that. Yes, I think it's good to fail sometimes. I think people are scared. It is scary because you don't want to fail. I don't mean to fail completely, but I mean, I think it's good to, to fail at times because it is a learning experience. And if you don't fail, then you can't learn. You can't learn from anything, you know, by yeah. doing that. So I've definitely had my ups and downs and had to learn things the hard way for sure. I think the last last year was probably my roughest, roughest year. Uh, just business-wise, you know, trying to, to grow because people come, people go. And that's something you have to expect, especially when you have vendors in there and things like that. And that's fine because, you know, some things aren't going to move where other things will. And so um, it gets, you know, it gets discouraging from time to time, you know. But uh, I will say last year was probably one of my roughest, my roughest years. Um, we lost, uh, lost my dad. Um, he passed away. And so both of our parents are gone. And so last year was just, it was just one of those things where you just wanted to lock give up like I'm done don't want to do anything you know everything just seems to be falling apart you know and so um and of course I had um, my middle child uh, a couple years ago he had brain surgery so all this was like in the middle of me like going into the brick and mortar and getting started and stuff like that Um, and my youngest one's autistic and so I was homeschooling him also so he would come to work with me so I'd have to homeschool him do all that so there's like a lot of challenges in that with a lot of things that were failing on top of that in the business and stuff but I feel like um, at the end of the day it all worked out like I learned from those Mm -hmm. you know things the failures and stuff and I learned a different way you know I gotta approach things or do things this way and all those challenges I think just kind of made me stronger and stuff and Mm -hmm. then boom it's just like within a year I mean we've expanded and it's and it's grown, and so when you look back from where you are now to where you were then, it's like, you know, failing's not so bad if you take it and you learn from it and you make some adjustments, you know. But you just can't, I mean, just can't give up, you know. I think it's just something that you have to push through and just kind of gather your thoughts and, you know, and if it's if it's meant to be, if it's a God thing, it's going to work out, you know, but you have to be able to have that faith and that trust and just keep going knowing that it's going to be handled and that he's got you and stuff like that so um I do think failure is not necessarily always a bad thing I think we all need that from time to time yeah yeah the way I like to do it is failure is good you know you're gonna learn from if you learn from it yes quitting not so good no I agree yes and sometimes you do sometimes you just want to quit you just because it's easy it's the easy way out you know yeah but you can't quit you can't you get nowhere if you quit so Absolutely. Rosie, is there anything else you would like to share with you know, our audience and the people that are listening? Um, yeah, I mean, I just, I do, like, I'm very thankful for the, the support that we do get. You know, we, we do have a lot of support and it has grown. And so we, we always appreciate that. And we just, we love all of our people that come in and go. And if you haven't been, 
to the store, you know, we would love people to come by and just check it out, you know, just kind of walk around, get to know me. I'm there all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and I just, you know, I want to see, I want to see the community grow, you know. I think that um, just here in Restaville through Pottsville and even Atkins, I mean, I think we have such a good community and, and, it, and it can grow, you know. We just have to have the support and stuff like that, you know. People just know that, you know, people are there and we're here. Um, but anyways, that, that's pretty much it. Like, I just, I just love the support that we do have you know, for all these small businesses and stuff. So that's very appreciated. Yeah. I imagine in Pottsville, it's so small and tight. <laughs> a lot of people supporting you. What was the, yes. was, did y'all get many visitors for the eclipse? Well, I was closed. Okay. So well, I but opened, as far as Pottsville goes, yes, did you notice? Yes. So I, um, I was there through the weekend. It was pretty, it was pretty busy through the weekend. Um, as far as Monday goes, I really don't, I really don't know, but it, there was definitely some, high foot traffic going on (laughs) on the weekend so I was just like oh my gosh but and I think that was great too just people from around all other places getting to come into a small town you know because I mean Mm -hmm. you know we're not a very big it's not a very big town so to have people come and just see the uniqueness of it um was pretty neat so absolutely well Rosie thanks for you know coming on the podcast talking about everything Rosie can you tell people your address and the best way to Maybe it's Facebook or website. Yes. So we're located at 5395 West Ash Street in Pottsville. Um, and you can go on Facebook and follow me at Everything Rose. Um, just click on there, hit follow, and like everything you need to know will be on there. Like I'm yeah. on there every day. So that's probably the best way that you'll get the get info and things like that. And what's the next vendor that you want, the next thing you want to add to the Oh, gosh. Store? Um, to the I, men's line of Well, I am thinking of something. some type of clothes for the men's line but like accessories I don't know I need people to like tell me you know I have lots some people saying oh we need some fishing stuff and you know and things like that so um honestly I really don't know I'm Mm. I'm pondering on that you think I would know having three boys but yeah it's hard it'd be (laughs) cool if uh there's someone around here that made fishing stuff like have you ever seen those hand reels yes those are cool yes so I actually um growing up um the old the old way that they do it we used to have one mm-hmm. um so i think it would be neat to have like just stuff like that where you know because i do i have a lot of men that come in there so i want to be able to accommodate them also you know so that's my next big thing is just like a, a men's line so i'm up for any like advice or input <laughs> on that so they can get on there and kind of help me out a little bit yeah uh, awesome i think i i like that you're doing the lives and i kind of want to before we wrap it up i just want to reiterate to because we have a lot of business owners that listen we okay. like to you know break down like what works and what doesn't work for some businesses so doing facebook lives and in your case you're actually using it as a way to market mm-hmm. for your vendors yes. and grow them as well so I think that's a really really good move and just think about how you can use any sort of facebook live to you know even i mean I, I, what I would probably recommend myself to and everyone else is just go watch some of yours and see how you've done it. Mm-hmm. It's different every that. time. I think you need to keep it unique. You know, you don't want to go on there and talk about the same things all the time. Like you just, and sometimes we just get on there and we just talk. So there's been times where um, me and my sister in law, like we might just get on there and we'll just kind of just talk about different things about life and just, you know, the toughness of it, just to be real so people know, you know, life isn't just peaches and creams either. So that's another way for them to just to get to know, like, you know, who I am and and how, Mm -hmm. you know, I do things and things like that is just to be real. So I think sometimes you just need to get on there and just be real about life, you know. Um, If I have something, like if I'm having a rough week, sometimes I just get on there and I'm like, hey, if anybody's going through, you know, blah, 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 and I kind of – kind of do a run through of what I'm going through um Mm. but also use it as a testimony too because you know we all go through things and sometimes people just feel alone so every one of my lives are just different they're just it's just whatever is laid on my heart for that day or or that week or something like that so I think you just need to keep it real and um so people can just kind of get to know you on a personal basis I think that's what really really helps is they get to get on there and like oh my gosh you know everything's just not peaches and creams. I think sometimes you get on things and your life is just awesome. And I'm like, man, <laughs> I wish yeah. mine was like that. 
Yeah, that's but one of the dangers of reali- social media. You know? Yes, but th- realistically, it's not. And so I think just being real, people appreciate that. You know, you just and just be yourself. Like, don't try to be like. That's one thing. Like, mm-hmm. small businesses. You know, um, you know, you got. So Sometimes you got so many things of the same things, and you're like, oh, my gosh, they're doing so good, so I want to be like that, or mm. I want to be like this. But, no, you just need to be yourself. Like, just figure it out, you know. Just be unique, be yourself, you know. Do things that you enjoy to do that you want to bring to other people's life, you know. You don't have to be like John Doe over here, you know, because that's, I mean, that's not being real. So I think people appreciate that more, you know, when it's just, you know, this is who she is. You know, you get what you get with her. You know, she, you know, she is what she says type thing or he. Mm. And so I think that's something else that I've noticed, too, that I'm just – I kind of draw away from. I'm just like, just be, you know, you don't have to be like that. Just, you know, be yourself. And I think that it will, gr- it will grow better that way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Rosie. Uh, is there anything else? I don't think so. I think good. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we will catch you on the next one.